wasting your time. Now, where's your Christmas spirit? Christmas is over, Philip. Well, I'd like you to read this anyway. I think it might change your mind. Hello? Is there anybody in there? You want to come out and play with us? Oh, don't say that. I think it's going to be a lot easier to manage this one in there than it is out here. Well, if it were going to be easy to manage, it wouldn't be a loose. Or a shame. Hello? Do you have any idea how lucky you are? You have the most beautiful mother in the whole world. That's the happiest mother in the whole world. <laughs> Oh, I wish we could just freeze this moment, this very moment, for always. I know I had another present for you here someplace. I wish you'd slow down here. I cannot clean up this mess as fast as you're making it. What mess? You've been a bachelor for too long, Reed. Oh, well, yeah? Well, why don't you try and loosen me up, all right? Maybe you're the one who can reform me. <laughs> All right, well, I know it's here someplace. Uh, this is absolutely the best Christmas I've ever had in my whole life. It hasn't been too bad for me either. Except, um, what happened to that horse that I asked you for? Oh, well, I, I wanted to give you something to look forward to next year. Ah. Yes, well, that's the kind of thing that grown-ups are always saying. I suppose there's always an inevitable letdown after Christmas, but that's okay. It's normal. I found the present. And I think it's the kind of thing that we'll be able to overcome any kind of letdown. Okay. What is it? Let's open it up and take a look. There's no way I can accept this, Fletcher. <laughs> I didn't feel no. like Christmas without my own daughter in my house. John, oh, darling, you've got to give her time to learn to feel like your daughter. And don't worry, you'll have plenty more Christmases together. I hope you're right. Okay. Yes. Oh, hi. Good morning, Vanessa. Let me take your coat. Good morning, Henry. Dinah is quite the young woman. Oh. Is she ready to see me? I'm afraid not yet. No, I, I know that you're anxious to tell your side of the story. I have but to tell now my side. is not the time, Vanessa. It's too soon. Too soon? What do you mean it's too soon? I can't give her more time. She's just going to wind up getting used to hating me. I think we should let her accept one parent at a time. Then once she trusts me, maybe I can bring her around. Why should you be the only one she trusts? Well, oh, don't forget, Dinah and I were in the same predicament. By keeping us apart all those years, you gave us something to share. Oh, that's wonderful. No, no, I'm not leaving you out of this, Vanessa, but you must realize how bitter and angry Dinah is about you giving her up. I realize, I know. But it was different then. And under the circumstances, I did the best I could to assure that she'd get into a good home. And once I found out she was missing, I tracked her down. I understand. And I... I understand that. But unfortunately, there is nothing you can say until Dinah is ready to hear it. I am her mother. Wouldn't matter if you were Abraham Lincoln. She won't hear it. Fine. What am I supposed to do? Just step aside and let her forget that I exist? Uh, d darling, nobody is saying that. I won't let her forget you, Vanessa. 
But I am telling you, if you push Dinah now, she may very well run away again. She didn't run away. She was kidnapped. You didn't tell her, Henry? Tell me what? Well, uh, actually, Ross, it's not the sort of present a father wants to give his daughter for Christmas. What are you keeping from me, Daddy? Vanessa, Dinah and Dory tried to hit the road again. Philip found them at the bus station, and he talked them out of it. You mean that she'd rather be on the road than with us? Oh, God. God, she must hate me. Thanks for coming over. So, how you doing? Well, uh, I had a dream last night that Joe and Shelley got me back. Oh, well, look at it this way. At least now you could wake up. You know, that's what's scaring me. I mean, when I was with them, it's sort of like it was all a dream. I mean, I was so mad all the time to really realize what could have happened. Mm. Well, after seeing Joe and Shelley, I think you were in serious trouble. Now that I'm safe, I realize I was crazy trying to cause all the trouble I did. I mean, I faked being sick. I, I tried to escape. Ugh, don't remind me. Cameron, you know, I could have been killed. You feel safe now, don't you? I, I, I wanted to thank you for uh, looking for me. I just wanted to find you, like everyone else. All the kids said that you and Dory really cracked the whips on those <laughs> search parties. <laughs> yeah, they call me Cameron and the Terrible. <laughs> and I, uh, I know you risked your life searching the camp all alone. Uh, you would have done the same for me. Yeah, I would have. You're here! Yeah, why shouldn't I be? I don't know. I, I, I dreamed those creeps got you back. Welcome to the club. Why can't you accept my ring? I'm sorry, Fletcher. Is it the color? I mean, if, if you don't like the color, I can go right now and buy another box of Cracker Jacks and exchange it maybe for a beige Fletcher. one. Fletcher. It's a beautiful ring. I... I love the ring. It's, it's just... I'm gun-shy. I... About getting married so soon after leaving Kyle, you know that. Who said anything about getting married? Oh, engagement rings lead to parties, and parties lead to wedding showers. Is that the part where we get the presents? And then uh, that, that brings up the inevitable question of exactly when are we getting married, and, and you find yourself being carried away by a series of events that just have a momentum all of their own, and then you start doing what people expect you to do instead of listening to yourself. Maeve, please just slow down for a minute, all right? This is a very special ring. See? No strings. An engagement ring is a string. That is semantics. Words. Come on. Let's not get hung up on that, all right? Now, just call this whatever you want to call it, all right? Call it a Merry Christmas ring. Call it a Happy New Year ring. Call this a friendship ring. Call this a mood ring. Why do I feel like I'm being conned into an interview that I don't want to see in print? Look, I know that you're not yet ready to talk about marriage, and that is okay. Is it? Yeah, sure. After all, it is you who is all the time reminding me that you could possibly live without... <laughs> and listen, I just wanted to give you something. would show you how much I love you and how I am with you all the time. It is beautiful. Yeah. And somehow I just didn't think I could make the same kind of statement with a toaster oven. A toaster oven would not make the same kind of statement. Okay, I accept. <laughs> mm. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't accept so fast. Do it again. Fletcher Reed, I will be proud to wear your ring. Why don't we 
we go upstairs and slip out? Why don't we go upstairs and slip it off? But certainly he hastened his own death. All of us have handicaps. Few are of our own choosing. The way to fight them is to take advantage of all the help the world has to offer. As John claude Laval found out too late, hiding the truth is the greatest handicap of all. Well, what do you think? I think that Philip is an excellent writer, well organized, hard hitting, direct. He writes the truth. But unfortunately, this is not the mirror's style. You're right. The mirror's style is lies. We don't run docudramas. Well, maybe you should. You know, you run that piece would be a public service. The public doesn't buy the mirror to be edified or to be scared by that kind of homily. Now, if Monsieur Laval had had a rare tropical disease... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, you're worried about the mirror. Okay, well, Dad, how's it gonna look if a byline by the publisher's son appears in the journal instead? I won't be intimidated, Philip. You know, they might even run a picture. You can sell your friend's PR piece wherever you choose. Why is it so hard for you to admit when you've made a mistake? Have I? <laughs> well, if you don't know, how can I explain it to you? Then please stop trying. OK, that's good. Let's go. Come on. Oh, uh, don't forget your article. No, no, no. I always keep a copy. Besides, that's being revised. Already? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be an introductory paragraph now uh, pointing out how detrimental to the community unprofessional journalism can be. We have a lot of day, Mr. Spaulding. And get me skags at the mirror. Yes, it's Alan Spaulding. I want to see you right away. Now, some days I really hate having to put clothes on. Not as much as I hate having to watch you do it. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, at least this was a Christmas I'll never forget. <laughs> uh, what, what's so funny? <laughs> I was just remembering Hawk giving away all his Christmas presents before he'd even gotten them under the tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the old man sure is a lot different than I remember. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of him to remember from those days, was there? He was very proud of you. The way you lit up company. All those men watching you. <laughs> go on. Oh, you want me to stop? I said go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just the most beautiful lady in the place, that's all. Mm. Yeah. All those men wishing that you were in their arms instead of mine. <laughs> I'm not quite as generous as Huck Shane, though. What would the world do without Christmas? I just wish it would last a little longer, that's all. Like I said, <clears throat> stay. I'll get it. Okay. Hello. Yeah, sorry to uh, bother you, Josh, but I just want you to stay cool and listen for a minute. Okay. Something's not right down here at the trucking area, and I thought you might want to keep it under your hat. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <clears throat> what do you think we should do about it? I'd rather show you before I do anything. You think you can get down here fast without attracting too much attention? Yeah, I think I can handle that. Thank you. What was that? Um, somebody kicked in the soda machine at work. I have to check it out. See, there you are. Back to reality. Well, I think it's about time I shoved off anyway. Just take care of yourself. Done a pretty good job so far, haven't I? Bye. Don't lose that bodyguard. Kind of fond of what he's protecting. <laughs> Well, if you two will excuse me, I think I'll go upstairs and look in on little Billy. Thank you, Daddy. 
Let's hope the new year brings us some good news. I can't believe how this is affecting me. Well, I can. Being rejected by family is far worse than anything a stranger could do. You know, when she turned away from me at the camp, I knew that things would be awkward between us, but uh, I didn't expect her to hate me. Vanessa, from what she's told me, it's not actually you that she hates. It's all those years of feeling unwanted. <laughs> so now she's making me feel unwanted. It's poetic justice, I guess. Well, I'm not sure what it is, but I certainly can understand Dinah's feelings. That is part. Every time I picture her turning away from me at the camp, I, it's as if I were seeing the whole world turn its back on me for the mistake that I made. You're not giving up, are you? Do I have a choice? Look, time is on your side, and it's healed deeper wounds than this. If you say so. Look, you are simply going to have to be patient. Patient? You know how hard it was for me to be patient when I was looking for her, and now I know that she's right there under your roof. Vanessa, I am convinced that Henry and I are the best medicine Dinah could have right now. I am too, that's fine. So look, you say she trusts you, good. You talk to her, you, you figure out some way that I can make things better. No, no, I don't know. Look, just tell her I, I'm not the same person. I, she thinks of me as some big grown-up woman when this happened, and I, I wasn't. I was a little girl. I just don't know what would happen, Vanessa. Ross! You know I've changed. I'm not that little girl anymore. And I... I would never give up my child now. You know that. All right. You will. You have to. Thanks. Hey, happy holidays. Oh, thank you. Looks like you got everything that Santa wanted. Oh, yeah, and even more. So you're the one who got my horsey. Mm, yeah, I did better than that. <laughs> you did, huh? Where's Maeve? She's wrestling around with experimental croissant. Excellent. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Want to try one of my experiments here? Uh, yeah. yeah. You want one? No, I think I'll pass. Well, it can't be that bad. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Actually, the the truth is, <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> well, that, that's great. How long? Recently enough to know that it's Joshua's baby. <laughs> All right. Great. I, I couldn't be happier for you. That's wonderful. Uh, just don't forget to put the crib on Joshua's side of the bed. Yeah, if I had a croissant for every time she says you're closer. That's not true. You want to switch sides? <laughs> no, forget it. <laughs> All right, believe me, it's a two-person job. <laughs> just curious, are you and Josh getting married? There's a lot of that going around lately. Uh, you know, you know what I need more than anything? Mm. I need a favor from you, too. Sure. I'm trying to save someone's reputation. Whose? Rick Bowers. I, um, just thought I would stop by and give you some homework that you could do over the holidays. Gee, uh, thanks. <laughs> I think you just wrecked my excuse for not doing my holiday homework. Oh, sweetie, I'm sure all your friends will track you down and give you all your assignments, too. Uh, yes, Cameron offered to catch me up, the rat. <laughs> oh, he came over to see you? But, uh, Dory broke it up. Oh, no, really? Yeah. That's what they say little sisters are for. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> well, so how's it going, being with your father for the first time? I'm really glad I came last night. It is gonna take a little getting used to, though. I bet Ross is just delighted. I suppose. <clears throat> I mean, I know he's my dad and all, but I really only know him from spending Christmas with him. But you like him, don't you? Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. You know, it's a little weird. We're both new to the uh, father-daughter routine. <laughs> yeah, I think that's to be expected. Yeah. I'm real proud of you, though, the way you've made such a mature adjustment to all this. 
Lillian, I'm... I'm sorry I found my father. You shouldn't say something like that. I... I mean... I'm sorry I'm, I'm running out on you. You've just been so... so great to me. Dinah. Sweetie, you're not running out on me. I mean, this is where you belong. Ross is your family. Yeah, but... your family, too. Thank you. <laughs> Whenever you need a spare mother, I promise you I'll be there. As far as I'm concerned, you're the only mother I care about. I think that you'll find <clears throat> that Vanessa is a remarkable woman. Maybe so, but that doesn't mean I have to let her be my mother all of a sudden. Yes, but she really is wonderful. And if you just give her the, uh, the chance. I'd, I'd rather talk to you. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I, mean I, I really do want you to always feel you can talk to me, you know? But Vanessa deserves... I don't want to think of her. Can we just forget Vanessa? Of course we can, if that's what you really want. Hi. Hi. Aren't you supposed to be at the office today? Uh, something came up. Anything I can help you with? We've got 150 cents of these. Simon. Hi, boss man. What brings you down here? I uh, just came down to uh, say hello. Maybe use a soda machine. You got a quarter on it? Uh, no. Just a second. Listen, Frankie, would you do me a favor? Go fuel up number four for me. What's up? After that accident we had, I decided to come down here and check through some of the equipment. It's a good idea. Yeah, so I started snooping around the trucks before the men started their shift. I take it you found something. Uh-huh. Somebody filed through the insulation on the ignition wires. It's a suicide issue. <sighs> Great. You sure it wasn't just Fred? No. It's a clean cut. That could make it short out, right? Yeah, and on truck number six, it's, it's so close to the carburetor, it could make it explode. Okay. It's good work, Simon. I thought I'd better talk to you before I talk to anybody else. See? Sure nobody else knows about this. Nobody but the guy who did it. What about your buddy, Cat? Did he have access to that truck? Yeah, but so did everybody else. Who usually drives it? Uh, it changes. It's done on a rotational basis, depending on the load. Great, so anybody could be the target. But the guy who doctored it. Have you assigned number six yet? No, but I need it. It's a short week, and every load's gonna count. You have a manifest for it? It's already loaded, just waiting there. Uh, if we don't roll it soon, we're gonna lose time, then we're gonna lose business. Yeah, but if we send it out with somebody, whoever drives it is gonna lose his life. Well, that's right. That's why I wanted to talk to you before calling the cops. I'll tell you what. Don't make that call. Why not? Maybe this is our chance to find out if your buddy Cat is really the saboteur. Well, how are you gonna do that? We set a little trap for him. I'm gonna use that truck. And the real shame is that Rick's been cleared by everyone but the public. Yeah, look, I was always under the impression, though, that Rick was a pretty fair doctor before this malpractice thing hit him. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he still is. It's just that we have to let the public know that, and I think that's where the journal could help. Oh, it sounds like Chelsea Reardon could use some help, too. Mm. Yeah, but it's pretty hard taking back the kind of accusation she aimed at him. Yeah, but she just needs the chance. I mean, she's more than willing to give you whatever you need. Well, nobody blames Chelsea for, for trying to find out why her fiancé died. I think we'd all do the same thing in her situation. Yeah, and we'd all feel just as horrible being like in Rick and Chelsea's position in a mistake like that. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I don't see why we just can't help out. Restore Rick's good name, you know, let people, the public, know how competent he is as a doctor. I mean, hell, I could make him a legend in his own time. <laughs> Within proper journalistic limits. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you two know how to handle yeah. it best. The best way you know how. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, thank you so much for oh, listening. Sure. Of course. For everything sure. else. Okay. I'm really glad that we can be friends. I am, too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. All right. Happy New Year, Reba. Travel safe. Nice lady. Yeah. Is it my imagination, or was she positively glowing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Christmas is a wonderful time of the year, and I am very happy that Reba is finally getting the kind of life she deserves.
Yeah. We've all been pretty lucky this season, haven't we? Yeah. And, uh, speaking of happiness... Fletcher Reed. Rick Bauer's career is not going to wait for us to finish if we start that again. Oh, Spock, I hate it when you're so logical. Let's get to work. You want an editorial? Yes, I do. All right, but listen, there is more than just news going on with this one. All right, let's talk about the reader's responsibilities this time. Great. Okay, shoot me a lead. Okay. The obligations of a free press are many. But even more crucial is the reader's responsibility to understand how the news adds up. For facts mean very little until they are examined together. Now, listen, thanks for telling you really what a great article. Yeah, great. well, we're going to get it in print somewhere. Oh. <clears throat> hey, hey, I heard you uh, wrote me a eulogy. Well, you're, you're not quite dead yet. <laughs> it's the best piece of writing in town. No wonder it doesn't fit in the mirror. Listen, I appreciate what you both have done, but uh, I don't want you to go out any further on a limb for me, all right? Hey, Philip's article touches more than just your case. It's, it's something I think the public should be made aware of, don't you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And besides, I've already revised the old article, so... You two are really a piece of work, you know that? If we can just find a worthy subject... <laughs> you know, I, I still wonder if there's anything else I could have done for him. No, oh, buddy, Rick. you did everything you could. Jean-Claude didn't give you a chance. I just wish there was something I could do for you now. Listen, Chelsea, you do. I'm going to be my friend, all right? You use a lot of those right now. Hmm. And for everything I put you through, I never thought I'd hear you call me a friend. You're an amazing guy. Oh, boy. We've just been spotted by one of my dad's garbage men. Oh, gosh. That's Skaggs, the mirror's editor. I don't know what kind of clout you got with the boss, lady. Hmm? But we're running your piece, after all. My piece? No one master Philip wrote about Dr. Bauer. Go figure. <laughs> Did he say what I think he said, buddy? Oh! I don't believe that. We'll believe it, because we won! Way to go, buddy. I always knew you had a wicked oh, pen. Oh, yeah. Maybe they'll get off your back now. You know what? I didn't want to say this before, but I think seeing the truth in black and white would be the first time I really feel like I'm innocent. All right. And I tell you what, now that you got that behind your back, I think it's time we got on with our lives. You know, how about a New Year's Eve, guys? Amen. Man. And skiing. What do you say? What do you, go, let's go up the cabin and go skiing. All what right. Say, What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Um, I got to go see somebody. <laughs> Did you want to see me? Yes, I did. I thought that you should know that uh, Joe and Shelley are pleading guilty. What does that mean? It means they're probably going to spend several long terms in prison. Oh, no. Oh, good. Kidnappers should be wiped off the face of this earth. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about Ramona. Ramona will be fine. Don't worry about her. The uh, juvenile authorities are viewing her as completely innocent in all of this. But she's never been on her own before. She doesn't have to be on her own right now. She's going to be placed in a very good foster home. Well, it's not the same. Look, Donna, her foster parents are going to treat her far better than her real parents ever did. It's not saying much. Well, at least it's a step in the right direction for her. Well, maybe I better go home and um, let you two settle in. Hmm? Yes. Oh, Lillane, I want to... Uh, Thank you for everything you've done for Dinah for the last few months. Oh, Ross, she's done far more for me just by, just by being there. Yes, I know that. And I hope you're not going to let uh, a little thing like an instant father prevent you from your close relationship. Oh, not me. <laughs> Nor me, but um, you are the boss. Yes, of this house so far, yes. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Look, if you ever feel the need to, you know, you want to talk to Lillian, you want to get away from this bachelor life, please, you two, feel free to work something out. Thanks. I, I will. Good. Very generous of you, Ross. Thank you. Well, why shouldn't everybody be happy? <laughs> True. Dinah, goodbye, honey. And I love you. I love you. You have a wonderful life, you promised. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye, Ross. That's yours. No. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Can we go visit somebody else I have to see? 
I was hoping that you'd say that. Come on, lead the way. Great. You're gonna fill me in on this trap, or am I just gonna watch? How long is the run on number six today? 200 miles run. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sign number six to Cat. If he's our man, he's gonna do anything he can to avoid being on that rig when it blows. I like your style, but uh, what if he's innocent? He can't risk his life that way. No, I didn't say I was gonna put him on the road. I just wanna see his reaction when we pin number six on him. Well, that sounds like fun. Mind if I handle it? My guest. You got a real kick out of Cat. He's a nice fella. All right, why don't you send him in here right now? Right? My pleasure. By the way, it's good to have you down here. You, sir, are a fraud. No one's proven it yet. You know, you really enjoy having everyone think that you're an ogre, when in fact you're as sentimental as anyone else. You sure you're accusing the right man? Don't give me the dry routine. Skaggs told me that you're running my article in the mirror. And obviously you think I did it out of love and concern. Yes, of course I do. Well, let me put your delusions to rest. I did what I thought was best for the paper. It's all right, Dad. It can be our little secret. <sighs> Look, I didn't want you going to another newspaper and causing more of a furor. So the easiest way to defuse you was to run the damn thing myself. Right. I, I see your point. You better be careful, because by next Christmas, I may have you acting like a human being. And you'd better be careful, because by next Christmas, I may have you practicing my kind of journalism. Just don't give up, do you? Obviously, you don't either. I wanted to thank you for everything you did, Mr. Reed. Well, you're welcome. It was nothing but lies and dirty tricks. <laughs> Cameron said that you were the one who told him to follow his hunches. Yeah, so I did. Ross here, uh, my, my dad. <laughs> yeah, we, we've met. I see you. <laughs> yes. He, he said you were a big help. Well, look, just make a promise to me, will you please? That no more kidnappings. It's fine by yeah, me. And if you're ever in trouble, make it something simple, like a uh, civics paper or... Uh, Newspaper strike? God forbid. <laughs> Since I'm back, I was wondering, maybe I could see Ben? Oh, Dinah, sure, he's upstairs. I think Great. we just found ourselves a babysitter. <laughs> well, Dad? <laughs> How are things over at Father Knows Best? Well, I'm much better than Mom is. Yeah? You mean Dinah's still mad at Vanessa? Mad? She doesn't want anything to do with her. Oh, well, that's too bad, because, uh, look, Vanessa's got an awful lot to offer anybody, especially a young girl. I, I hope Dinah comes around soon. Yeah, so do I, because I'm as worried about Vanessa as I am about Dinah. Rejection's never easy. Uh, it must be worse coming from your own family. Dinah doesn't even remotely consider Vanessa family, and that's the problem. Yeah, well, she'll come around soon. I hope so. Because this is hurting Vanessa more than anything I can remember. So, what's the fair-haired boy doing down amongst the real workers? It's charming. I knew you guys would hit it off. Mm -hmm. but what's the deal here? Union business? Yeah, in a way. We're a little concerned about the way things are going down here. We want uh, management and workers to see a little bit more eye to eye, so I thought I'd come down here and check things out. Excuse me. Uh, what for, exactly? You have any objections? No, heck no. It's about time the company showed a little interest in the working man. Well, we're very interested. In fact, I'd like to work a little bit closer with you in particular, Cat. You don't mind that, do you? No, that's fine with me. Well, that's good. See, Simon and I here have decided that the best way for me to get to know the workers a little bit better is to assign their schedules. Since you're the union rep, I thought I'd start with you. That makes sense. I think so. Here you go. Good luck. Right, Wait a minute, you want me to drive number six? Yeah, I think that's what it says, isn't it? Hey, there is no way I am driving that truck. Why not? Look, I am sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm driving number one today. 
No, I think it says there that you're driving number six today. Yeah, uh, but you see, I already did all the preventive maintenance service on number one. Now, the union regulations are I get to drive the rig that I serviced. He's got a point. But number six is the one that's loaded. Uh, well, you'll just have to get another driver. Well, we can't do that. It's the holiday. We're a little short-handed. It's, it's not my problem. Look, I'll tell you what, Cap. You do the maintenance work on number six. You drive number six. And I'll pay your overtime. Simon here tells me that you never refuse overtime. <laughs> oh, suppose I just got some other plans. Well, what plans have you got, Cap? Number one's not even loaded yet. Why would you refuse overtime on a shorter run? Uh, I see your point. I thought you would. You know, I had a feeling he was gonna try and weasel out of that. Doesn't matter, I got what I wanted. He's the one. Well, how do you know? We can't fire the guy, we have no proof. I don't want him fired. I want him followed. Look, we're in trouble. Get the damn toolbox. All right. Don't need that either. Fletcher, what do you think this is? A newsroom? Come on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. All right, let's take a break. I'm ready for one. Let's go out for lunch and discuss it. Let's order in. We have to keep working. Oh. All right, okay. One takeout pizza coming up. With everything on it. Except the anchovies. Oh, Fletcher, I live for anchovies. I hate anchovies. Pick yours off. I want a divorce. We're not married yet. Threat. Pretending sure is nice. A one-time only offer. I'll live without anchovies today. At last, finally, you're almost perfect. That's a boy. That's it. I hope Billy realizes what he means to me. Well, I'm sure he wants to mean a lot to you. There's so many people I need to take care of right now. Mm, such as Diana? Yes. Well, we must all work together and try to open her eyes a little. <laughs> it's not her eyes I'm worried about, it's her heart. I'm afraid she's locked me out forever. Well, it's too soon to jump to that conclusion. Is it? Mm. You know, every day brings a new kind of pain. I'm not sure that I could take a lifetime of this. Well, darling... You can't undo the past. All you can do is love her and hope she'll return your love. I have a lot to give her. <laughs> yes, so I see. I don't just mean the presence, Daddy. I mean, you know, simple, everyday experiences like taking her shopping or, or uh, taking her for lunch at the club or problems that she could never talk to Ross about. Well, you do have an advantage there. Look at those silly presents. Imagine me thinking that I could fit a whole lifetime of Christmases under one little tree. Can't blame yourself for trying, dear. No, I suppose not. Just that I assumed that once we got her away from those awful kidnappers, that everything would be perfect. I got her a lot of presents. There's, there's a special one there that I had engraved for her. Doesn't look as though she'll see any of them now. I wonder who that is. Only one way of finding out. This has been Guiding Light. Fashions provided by Barney's. Jewelry by Monet and Yves Saint Laurent. Be 
sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.